Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Zayas, and today I'm here to review JoJo's Phantom Blood. Phantom Blood, aka JoJo's Part 1, is a mystery action adventure shonen manga. It went from 1986 to 1987 and was written by legendary mangaka Hirohiko Araki. Prior to JoJo's, Araki wasn't really well known in the manga industry. He had only written a couple of short manga, most of which were under 10 chapters and a couple of one-shots which had been nominated for an award, however they hadn't even won. Most of these manga aren't really that noticeable, however in Gorgeous Irene, the manga he did right before he started JoJo's, you can start to see Araki's style sort of start to come together. He drew these big, burly, muscular characters who were a little bit blocky, and this was similar to Fist of the North Star which had also just started right before JoJo's started publishing. These two series would have tremendous influence in manga in the next couple of decades, especially in terms of artwork. Oh yeah, and I didn't mention, this was in Shonen Jump, so he was already in the big boy league after having written just a couple series. Araki cites Ai to Makoto as one of his biggest influences, and while I wish I could comment on this, I really can't because the series isn't translated, or at least I am unable to find a translation of this series. What I can comment on, however, is that Ashida no Jo and Tiger Mask were written by the same author who wrote Ai to Makoto, and I can sort of see the artistic similarities between these series. It takes place in England, and in retrospect, vampire horrors in England have become massively cliché and a little bit played out. A lot of these scenes don't really feel too interesting, but on the other side, it is called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and there are a lot of bizarre and weird moments that happen in this series. And a lot of those bizarre moments are the most enjoyable part of the series. Our protagonist, Jonathan Joestar, is a gentleman who is righteous, pure, has a great sense of responsibility, and pretty much represents everything good in the world. Dio Brando is the polar opposite of Jonathan. He is evil from the day he is born and he commits horrible acts all throughout his lifetime for pretty much no reason. I mean, I guess maybe it's because his life is pretty horrible, but I wouldn't say that's like a really good reason to just go out and kill people. Their fathers are also polar opposites, one being an upstanding gentleman and one being a drunkard, but most of the character development and ideas that happen in the first half of the series is really just build up for the second half of the series. And in the second half, while the dichotomy between these two characters is more interesting, in the first half these characters aren't really interesting enough to carry the series. Jonathan is just plain, he's just vanilla, there's nothing really too special about him, he's a very forgettable type of character. If you could even name one thing that you remember about Jonathan, it's probably his massive size. Araki said that he used Arnold Schwarzenegger along with Sylvester Stallone to sort of model his characters and Jonathan looking like that at 20 years old and at 6'5 is quite impressive. I didn't really care too much about Dio until he put on the mask but after he puts on the mask he becomes a pretty unique and interesting character, one that's pretty much unforgettable. At first Dio is pretty much just evil and prideful, those are the only real characteristics we see from him. Later on in the series he becomes a lot more flamboyant, he starts to be more stylish, this is the first time we really see Araki use fashion in his manga, and he'll definitely do that several times in the future in the other JoJo's parts. He'll also have a lot more attitude later on in the series, and he'll release these really weird sounding shrieks, something like re. And even in terms of character, he starts to become more interesting than Jonathan. Jonathan is pretty much just the justice guy throughout the entire series, and he is pretty much the same. But Dio starts to gain a respect for Jonathan, and that's one of the more interesting parts of the character. Next up we have Speedwagon introduced, and he's pretty much just the guy who stands in the back and talks about how complex whatever the protagonist is doing is. But he is also quite brave at times, and in showing his bravery, he got named by many people as the best girl in JoJo's. Zapelli is the first reference in JoJo to pop culture, many more will come in the future. Zapelli himself is pretty much just the standard mentor-student relationship, 
which I don't mind, but again, it's just a bit plain, just a bit vanilla and not as out there as some of the other parts. I will note that his character design is actually quite good. And I think this is around where Araki sort of saw what his style was going to be like and decided what his style was going to be like for all of part one and part two. The action scenes in JoJo's were good from the start. The scenes have a lot of power and a lot of impact. Now, if you're just reading this, you're just starting, you might be like, huh, what's so special about the artwork? And that's because Araki didn't really find his style all the way until about halfway through Phantom's Blood. But when he does find his style, the artwork actually becomes very impressive. The things that I thought looked a lot better in the second half of the manga is that in the character designs, the lines got a lot thicker, giving the characters a lot more weight to them. And then on top of this, the backgrounds became really, really good. It looks like Araki has put a lot of effort into these backgrounds. And the fight scenes get even better with even more fluid motion, tons of impact, tons of hard-hitting moments. The only thing I can say that Araki is kind of lacking in is expressions. The faces are sort of so-so. I wouldn't call it bad, but I wouldn't really call it as great as the rest of the artwork in this thing. And Hammond was introduced as the power system in the series. And although it sort of served its purpose, I wouldn't really say that it's too great. In fact, it seems pretty flawed at times. There's never really a concrete rule set to Hammond other than that it uses breathing. So it kind of leaves Araki to do pretty much anything he wants with the system. And what he chooses to do is to create a bunch of overdrives pretty much. And the amount of overdrives in JoJo's has pretty much led me to believe that you can say any phrase and then say overdrive and it's probably an attack in JoJo's. When you compare Hammond to more interesting power systems like Nen from Hunter x Hunter, like Alchemy from FMA, or even Stans from later parts of JoJo's, you can see that it's pretty rudimentary. Bruford and Tarkus are introduced now, and they are the best villains in Phantom Blood. They are both righteous knights who are disgraced and then reincarnated by Dio. Bruford has a very unique fighting style in that he uses his hair to fight. Both of them have great character designs, but I really prefer Tarkus as he has that big, intimidating look. Bruford's fight with Jonathan was one of the better ones in the series. But what comes shortly after kind of blows it out of the water with his fight with Tarkus. I would probably call the scene iconic within JoJo's. Tarkus is just so intimidating, so brutal. And then there's the chains hanging onto their neck in the background. And they're just trapped in this room. And I just really, really love this fight. Zapelli's sacrifice was sort of preordained and you knew it was going to happen. But even then, you sort of felt it a little bit. And right afterwards, we get to meet legendary JoJo's character, Dyer, who does the Thundercross split attack. And it wasn't until after I read the series and I saw a meme about him that I actually remembered who he was. Because I kind of forgot that this guy existed. But apparently he was undefeated, comes into the series, loses two fights, and just pieces out right away. And this was one of the most funny moments in JoJo's now that I look back on it. The first time I read it, I didn't realize what had happened. And the last fight was sadly a little bit short. The entire series was short overall, but I was kind of hoping it'd be a little bit longer. There is a sort of eerie buildup, and it's kind of a little bit haunting on the way to the final fight. And I do like the artwork in general, but in terms of the fight itself, there wasn't really too much special about the fight. I did like that he did play with his cardroid artery. <laughs> that scene was pretty good. But aside from that, there was nothing really distinct from the rest of the series. He pretty much just punched him and he died. I did like the eye beam thing, but again, there was nothing that much different. It was pretty anticlimactic overall. I was hoping for a little bit more flair, especially on Dio's side, but he just couldn't really carry the final big fight scene. And the ending was pretty much just a setup for the next part, but I will say that Jonathan's death is probably the most tragic thing that happens in JoJo's and it happens to the nicest character too. He has the most horrible life. He has to put up with Dio for like 10 years and then he meets the love of his life and he just dies and he isn't able to spend time with her. It's quite sad. And he has to be Dio's body for the rest of his life, which, you know, he's not conscious, but you know, just a horrible fate. The series showed a lot of potential. There's some really good artwork. There's some really good fight scenes, especially with Dio and Tarkus. 
but there's just a lot missing from the manga too. The first 20 chapters really aren't anything special, and the last fight scene really isn't what I really wanted from the fight scene. Because of Araki's inexperience, I think this is the worst JoJo's part. There are definitely some highlights in it, some things I really liked, but there are a lot of flaws. So I'm feeling a strong to 6 to a light 7. Thank you everyone for watching. Like and subscribe, comment. Let me know if there's any manga you want me to review or just check out in general. I'll try to check it out. Um, next up, I think I'm going to be doing Saltiness and then My Dress Up Darling. I was also thinking of doing Violence Jack sometimes, so look out for those.